I told you estrogen is very important for your bone and muscle health, and let me introduce you to the musculoskeletal syndrome of menopause. Everything I've been talking about as your estrogen declines, guess what? Your bones and muscles are not exempt from the change, and then it affects your joints, your tendons, your pain, your inflammation, but let's carry on because I need you to know this. Let's look at the abstract and take a quick look at this article because 51% of humans are born with ovaries as the ovarian production of estrogen diminishes in midlife and ultimately stops. It is estimated that more than 47 million women worldwide will enter the menopause transition. It is important for you to understand that menopause is technically one day, which is 365 days since your last period. And the menopause transition is what you need to understand, which is taking you from perimenopause to menopause to postmenopause. It's a transition. We were meant to transition. Yes, I know that we were meant to have estrogen go down, but let me tell you some interesting things about why you're having the joint pain. Let's keep going. More than 70% of women will experience musculoskeletal symptoms and 25% will be disabled by them through the transition from perimenopause to postmenopause. Me as a physical therapist, 25%. One in four women will stop being who they are because of this hormone issue and not knowing what to do and people not recognizing and gaslighting women. One in four that is possibly your best friend, possibly you, possibly your sister, maybe you in future. And this is why I talk about it nonstop. Let's keep going. The often unrecognized collection of musculoskeletal symptoms largely influenced by estrogen flux include arthralgia, joint pain, loss of muscle mass, flabby ham arms, loss of bone density, osteoporosis or osteopenia, progression of osteoarthritis because estrogen controls inflammation and we can't cope anymore, among other such as frozen shoulder tendonitis, things like that. In isolation, it can be quite difficult for clinicians and patients to adequately appreciate the substantial role of decreasing estrogen because estrogen matters. If you haven't read that book, please do. Anticipate the onset of related symptoms and actively treat to mitigate future detrimental processes. I feel seen. This is what we've been talking about. So this article in review is going to introduce a new term, the musculoskeletal syndrome of menopause. We've been talking about this. I'm gonna say it one more time. The new term, the musculoskeletal syndrome of menopause. Your hormones affect your joint pain. Your doctor probably doesn't know this, just to let you know. And it is important for clinicians and the women they care for to be aware of this terminology and the constellation of musculoskeletal processes for which proper risk assessment and prophylactic management are super important. This is what we're talking about and I need you to know. There are things that we can do and it is going to involve lifestyle changes, movement changes, supplement, and it's a whole thing, but we can do this. So this decrease in estrogen, which causes the musculoskeletal syndrome of menopause can have a profound negative effect on women because you don't feel good, you don't move as much. And so we need you to know there are things that you can do to help yourself along. And you, the person that it's affecting and the people that treat you should know. Now we do know that estrogen, when it goes down and other hormones can affect your pelvic floor, the canal, there could be dryness, burning, itching, irritation, symptoms with intimacy. And this stuff I feel like people widely recognize, but they turn their head because they don't know about all the widespread joint pain and muscle issues, frozen shoulder, tendonitis, things like that. And what we have learned when the pelvic floor dysfunctions were happening, which we call genital urinary symptoms of menopause, the lack of clarity regarding the menopause symptoms and effects of menopause was part of the problem. So that right now, Vonda Rice et al. are being exceptionally clear that there are musculoskeletal symptoms of menopause, joint pain, tendonitis, frozen shoulder, arthralgia. The patient's imaging results may not show any structural finding. However, it is important to know that the hormonal changes that occur are related to estrogen. And they go on to say orthopedic surgeons should be aware of the musculoskeletal changes associated with menopause since they have permanent and devastating consequences. Once again, bone loss, muscle loss, muscle weakness, being frail, fractures, metabolic dysfunction because your muscles are an organ to help you gobble up that glucose. Your muscles are really, really important. They're a predictor of your longevity. They help you be who you are and they do help your metabolism. 
the NIH defines menopause as the point uh, 12 months after a woman's last period and perimenopause or the menopause transition as the years leading up to that point, women may have changes in their monthly cycles, hot flashes or other symptoms. The average age for overall menopause, perimenopause is 47.5 years while the average age of menopause is 52.6 plus or minus 2.5 with Hispanics having their earliest onset by two years earlier. Keep in mind, this didn't mention that um, African-American women are undertreated um, and they are found out much later that they are having this. So there is also that to be added in. During perimenopause, women have an average reduction of 10% in bone mineral density. Furthermore, women will have a reduction of 0.6 in muscle mass per year after menopause. These musculoskeletal issues can be attributed to the decline in estradiol, the most biologically active form of estrogen, which impacts nearly all types of musculoskeletal tissues, including bone, tendon, muscle, and cartilage, ligaments, and adipose tissue. The fall in estradiol levels lead to five primary changes. Inflammation increase. And the five changes are inflammation, sarcopenia, decreased satellite cell proliferation, osteoporosis, and arthritis. Inflammation is the stuff that is causing you the widespread joint pain, frozen shoulder, and all that discomfort with your tendonitis. Sarcopenia is muscle loss, which then you will have poor balance, falls, decreased muscle mass, arms that look like ham, loss of stamina, and walking slowly. Decreased satellite cell proliferation means decreased muscle mass, inability to gain muscle, which was my first indicator that perimenopause was affecting my bones and joints. Osteoporosis, which is the bone loss, which is loss of height, back pain, stooped posture, which is kyphosis, low impact fracture, meaning you broke when you shouldn't have. And arthritis is wear and tear, but technically uh, we can do things to help you prevent and keep your joints healthy. So we can bend and mend those joints. I just wanna give you a little hope there with the arthritis. This is why I talk about cars and joint mobility routines to protect the integrity of your joints and lubricate them. Estrogen helps regulate inflammation and I've been saying this all along and the pain experienced because you have inflammation increases across the menopause transition, peaking in early postmenopause. And so what happens is you're confused as to why you're feeling worse and getting worse. And it's because as your estrogen declines, your inflammation is going up. And so I need you to know, we have to do things to control our inflammation. For example, this is why I do walking more than box jumps. This is why I take omega-3s to help broker my inflammation because the standard American diet has a high level of omega-6s and I rest more. I don't drive it like I stole it. So you can find this article online. You can also listen to this article. You can also read this whole thing. You can save it. You can share it with your doctor if you want. Share it with your friends. I'm going to make a part two of things you can do because that is what you guys always ask. Okay, so now what? The sky is falling. What do I do? And I'll make a part two.